Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. And my name is Peter. Hello Peter, how are you today? Hello Ben, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Very uh, humbled to see all of the, the tweets and the social media interactions coming in from people's Spotify Unwrapped. Mm, they yeah. had us on their most listened to lists. Thank you everybody for sending us those. Yeah, bonkers that people spend that Listen. much time listening to us. <laughs> Full yeah. stop. They yeah. listen at all, so thank you everyone. Uh, this is a video game podcast. We are not doing Christmas questions just yet, even though we have now entered the, the Christmas month. Hold your Christmas known. horses. Hold them. Hold them. Hold them. We're not doing it next week either. We're doing it the week after. So the podcast that goes out on Saturday the 19th will be our Christmas podcast. We'll talk about it again next week as well, I'm sure. But don't send Christmas questions yet. However, if you wanted to send Christmas questions, uh, you would you would have to be... Oh, I'm doing it in a really weird order today. This is completely bucking the trend, isn't it? Yeah. If you, Whoa, if you I did you want to... you really badly there, just in the middle of a sentence. No, but... <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness, no. Then then I really would be ruining things, Flipping the trend, yeah. Even more than usual, even more than, than I am right now. Mm. If you wanted to submit questions for that Christmas show, you'd have to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and, uh, and support us there. They're, they're wonderful patrons over there. I'm completely lost now because we've been doing the same format for 93 episodes. Yeah. And I've I, gone about it all wonky and I it's can, really frightened me. I can like think of things that need to be done, but I have no idea what order they need to be done in. So. Okay, I'm going to attempt to bring it back now. Right. Here we go. However, we are not just supported by patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump as amazing as they are we are also supported by a fantastic company that, mm. that sponsors us every single week peter has the ad read in front of him now i have it's right here hey ben mm. remember when you were younger and you would go to fun family restaurants with your family where there's like a certain area of the restaurant that's kind of where kids can just play while they're waiting for their food. Uh, did you ever go to one of those? Yeah, like a, I think there was one nearby called a, a called the Wobbly Wheel. Wow, the Wobbly it had like Wheel. A, it had like a crash. Yeah, yeah. We used to go to one that we called The Place, even though that's not what it was <laughs> called. It had its okay. own name. But I think when my brother was about three or four, they'd been there once and then when they were going again, like a little, you know, a few weeks or months after that, he was saying, oh, we're going to the place, that place, the place today. And they said, yeah. And then he never stopped calling it the place until we were, <laughs> till we stopped going at about age 12. So oh, it was, no. just became the place, which is a bit weird. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we're sponsored by a place like that uh, okay. this week, but it's not your average crappy restaurant with a kid's play area in it oh Ugh. no they do the very best in fine dining that's right this week's sponsor is gastro's playroom oh very nice yeah come along for your best gastro food and just play while you're waiting for it to arrive even the adults can play but mm -hmm. probably in a special designated adult play area otherwise that might be a bit strange right and Don't what know. sort of things can you do there Oh, you can. Uh, it's it's themed like the inside of a PS Five. Um, oh, oh, okay, that's a bit. But weird. but not in a very not in a sort of whimsical way where like fans blow you around or you have to like tug on cables to get through things. It's just it's just a perfect one for you know one to one replica of the inside. Well, right. not one to one because okay. you won't be able to get in it. But like a giant replica of just the the slightly dull looking inside components of a PS5 mm. and you just sort of have to sit on them and and climb okay. on them. And... and the fan I'm assuming is is lethal. Oh yeah, it spins at exactly the same RPM as a small PS5 for a well, I say small, it's bloody massive, isn't it? Yeah, that's fast it's though. Huge. Yeah, really fast. It gets exceedingly hot in there despite the fan. Um it's Great. actually really quite a horrific experience doing the the play aspect of gastro's mm -hmm. playroom but that makes the dining experience all the more welcome and enjoyable because right when you barely escape with your life and get back to your table and then someone plonks down a really nice steak and chips steak and chips in front mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. uh oh you're really going to enjoy it 
Sounds great. How are they coping currently with the pandemic? Uh, you can still go with members of your own household. Um, there's a designated play area for every single table. So there's wow. If, that's partly why PS5 stocks are so low, is because Gastro's Playroom had to buy like 15 of them, one okay. per table, so that that's people expensive. could play. Yeah, um, wow. but they're doing okay. They're they're sticking to the the guidelines. Please book before you go. Don't turn up on the day. No, no, yeah. absolutely not. Sounds great. When when can we go? Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> what? 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 Why? Have they shut down? It's not real. Oh, you cad. Oh, I got you good. You oh. did. I I didn't see that coming. No. Guys, definitely like it could be a real place, didn't it? It did. For it's sure. just as well. That we have those patrons that I mentioned before. You've already mentioned. Yeah, thank goodness. We need them now more than ever. Mm. Now more than ever. So please go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump to support us there. You can submit questions to the podcast and also, you know, get other stuff too. Yeah. Last, last week, people got an episode of Worst Games Ever two days early. So, you uh, know, uh, think about it. Think about, think about it. About Maybe it. Give, it, give, it, give it some thought. Peter, where are we walking today? Oh, uh, I forgot it this week. Um, we're walking <laughs> through a child's playground. Oh, okay. Are there children no, in it? I don't want photos of children in it. I want a, an empty Just playground. Empty. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That would be be sort of kind of embarrassing, wouldn't it, if you were smaller than the children? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Don't need that on, on screen. Okay, so first question from a patron comes from from Reese Jones. Thank you Reese. Um a nifty feature of the PS5 is that it can tell you how long you've played a certain game, including all your previous PS4 titles. My question to you is, according to your PS5, what's your most played game? Keep up the great content. Much love from Scotland. Thank you Reese. Thank you Reese. I wish this I'd is known this nice. already because um last last week uh when I well, as we'll as we'll get to on what we play in, I'd already played a bit of Astro's Playroom, and I was mm. like, "Oh, I want to maybe play this on stream." Actually, it's really fun, and I was like, "Hmm, I wonder if I've actually played two hours worth right now because I completely lost track of time while I was playing it." And I thought, "I want to at least play two hours, so I'm not gonna overtake where I got up to when I'm streaming." And I looked on the PlayStation the, on the PS5 to see if I could find like somewhere where it would tell me but i obviously just looked in the wrong place because i couldn't find anything like this um mm. but i've since since discovered it yeah it's yeah. nice Th this has been a feature that's long been requested mm. on playstation it's been available on other platforms for for quite a while now yeah and in, in fact for on some platforms for the entirety of its existence so it's nice that we've got this and it's not i would say it's not 100 percent accurate and i think there's an element of having to be online while you're playing for it to be tracked. I know that uh, last year, or maybe even earlier this year, who even knows anymore, mm. uh, PlayStation sent out, I think it was just in Europe as well, your top three played games or something. Right. And the numbers were just completely off. Like, they were so wrong. My it, Borderlands 3 was on there for me, and obviously I played a lot of Borderlands 3 last year mm. and earlier this year. And my number of our played hours was significantly lower than the friend who I'd played through it all with. <laughs> so that was completely, completely wrong and wonky. But this seems to be a, at least a little bit more accurate. And it makes for some startling reading in some cases. I didn't scroll all the way through because I've got... It's just games for days. And, and I yeah. just couldn't be asked to keep scrolling. But my highest was uh, 15 days in Bloodborne. Wow. Okay. It's like that, 300 odd hours or thereabouts. That's bonkers. That's nowhere near what uh, I've got on any of mine. Um, okay. So my highest was um, Battlefront 2, actually. Star Wars Battlefront 2, mm -hmm. uh, which I've played 89 hours of. Nice. Um, and then uh, sort of running up to that. Is I mean it's it's just it's very predictable my top three or four so Star Wars is at the top and then second was Insane Trilogy seventy seven hours third was Spyro Reignited sixty eight hours and fourth was Crash Four with sixty hours nice. um, but there you go so wow uh, yeah. I I made a note of some 
interesting ones as well. Mm. In Fallout 76, how many hours did I play it for, Peter? Oh, um, I mean, you so you persevered, didn't you, for a long time to try and just... To get the platinum. Yeah, to... And, oh, I don't know. How about uh, f- five days? Oh, I don't have it in days. I have this one in hours. Right. Uh, 150 hours in Fallout okay, 76. Okay, well, that's more than five days. It's a lot of it's a lot of hours there. Yeah. I also spent one hundred hours playing Fallout Shelter. You know the mobile game that they ported. Yeah, yeah. To PS4, played that for a long time again to get the platinum, which I did. Mm. But man, I, I sort of got obsessed with it over the course of a couple of months, and would just check in every day. Yeah, just to see how it was going. Didn't realize it was a hundred hours though, so it makes for some startling and quite upsetting reading. But it's interesting. Yeah, um, Steam have has had this. For a long time, I think yeah. maybe pretty much for the entire time, and I've definitely got days worth of hours spent on day, days worth of hours. That's a strange thing to say. <laughs> days worth of time spent in certain games there from more like when I was a student, really, and I didn't have a, a console with me, um, and I used to play a lot of Terraria and Orcs Must Die, and um, mm. yeah, various things there with friends. Um, so it's good. It's a really good. Uh, thing to look at it's interesting um it's kind of strange that clearly this information has been logged somewhere and has been you know they've got stuff that they've got a figure on there for every game we've played even if you've not installed it onto your ps5 or played it in years so that information's been available all this time it's just they've not shown it to us which is you know but disappointing really that we could have been looking at this uh much much sooner but at least Mm. it's here now Exactly. It's long been a problem with Sony's online infrastructure across its last three consoles, really, is that they clearly had access to this information, as we learned with that email blast they sent everyone, saying, here are your top played games of the year, or whatever. And it's like, so you have this information, you just don't want to share it with us, which yeah. is annoying. Um, and part part of me thinks it's because their system was so poorly designed in the first place, and they've slowly improved it to the point where it is now. Hmm. And the other part of me thinks they didn't want to put that feature on PS4 because it wouldn't be a selling point for PS5, but it would just be another whistle or a bell, if yeah. you prefer. Yeah. Like, oh, look what your PS5 can do. You can do it not on PS4, though. That's impossible. We yeah. can't do it. Uh, so, yeah, it's nice. It's it nice is. to see that stuff. I keep forgetting where it is. I wish it was next to trophies because, obviously, I check those more often, but it's it's on your profile, I think. Yeah, you have to go like to profile, and then there's an option on profile called Games. And you go on games, and then it, that yeah, you think you it would there. have it on trophies or or something. Yeah, it's a bit of a labyrinth. The PS5 UI. I'm still getting my still getting my head around it. Yeah, hope they, hope they clean it up a bit, but yeah. we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Hey, it's time to move on to a brand new section we've never done before, Peter. This is uh-huh. groundbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, um, we call it Scarlet Fire. And Ooh. the theme tune is about to play right now. Well, on the video version, on the, but not on, on, the, the, not on the audio version. <laughs> no, sorry if you're listening on audio. <laughs> Loser. Maybe, maybe we can do it. Ready? <clears throat> Scarlet Fire. Fire. <laughs> It's time for Scarlet Fire, known colloquially around the world as what we play in. It's the same in every language, Peter. It is. That's how special it is. In that all over the world, they all just use the English phrase so that everyone knows what they're talking about. You wouldn't want that to get lost in translation, would you? It's that important. It is. It is that important. But before we talk about what we've been playing, Peter, it's time to throw it over to senior video editor of Triple Jump, James Jenkins, who's going to tell us all about Kronos Before the Ashes, the sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, which released last year. Oh, okay, excellent. Over to you, James. Cheers, guys. Yeah, so, turns out, that game about the Demon's Hole isn't the only remake of an old Souls-like game with a cult following. We've got Kronos Before the Ashes, which is actually a prequel to Remnant from the Ashes. That's definitely what Ben meant to say just now, not a sequel. But it's also a reworking of 2016's Kronos, a VR-supported third-person action RPG. And yeah, third-person in VR sounds headache-inducing, but apparently it got a pretty good reception. This time, there's no VR. It's more of a Souls-like feel, or Souls-lite is probably more accurate. And... 
I didn't think it was that great, to be completely honest. I've only played three to four hours up to the first boss, so it's strictly like early impressions. It's got your familiar Souls game setup. Shoulder button light and heavy attacks, blocking, dodging, parrying, strong emphasis on timing attacks, except lots of things fell off. It was clunkier to control, you got a sluggish turn in circle, you seem to move slower than what I've seen of the original VR game. And sure, you can sprint briefly using up stamina, but attacks don't use up stamina for whatever reason, uh, taking away that core element of strategy and attack management. You can literally stun lock the basic enemies over and over, and if you did try parrying, well, the window of opportunity is tiny, and you have no satisfying repost move, or pisseral if you will. Uh, so there's really no point trying to parry. Level design is... is okay. It's not broken, and there's some simple puzzle solving to do, and a bit of branching paths and stuff, but it feels a bit dull and repetitive. It's basically a series of blocky rooms chucked together, mostly. But what I did find intriguing was the setting at the very start of the game. So, before all the typical fantasy world trappings, you walk through a modern-ish, I think, 60s era facility? And that combo of fantasy and contemporary setting seemed, it seemed pretty cool. I haven't played Remnant, so I'd gone in blind on that front. But it ruined things immediately by having three tedious elevator rides in a row, which breaks things up so much. And it just felt like a really poor design choice to introduce a player to immediately. Despite my moaning, though, it's, it's certainly got some cool ideas. The big USP is the fact that every time you die, you age one year and that affects your stats, with perks making you stronger when you're young and sprightly, or more attuned to magic when you're a feeble old man. But yeah, I didn't notice much of an effect early on with that, to be honest. The other thing I was quite impressed by was the run-up to the first boss, and a recurring mirror portal puzzle, which links to other smaller or larger portals, shrinking you down to solve a puzzle, or biggifying you so you can take on this massive cyclops fella that kept trying to kick you in earlier on. Realistically, the game's not terrible. It's got a few interesting ideas, but really, I think it'll only appeal if you're looking for a nice, easy entry into Souls-like games. And considering it gets a lot of the little gameplay nuances wrong, and it doesn't replace them with its own interesting mechanics, you're probably better sticking to last year's Remnant, which just looks like a more complete Souls-like experience. Oh, and you have guns in that game too, which makes it better by default, according to video game logic. So there's that. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble as always, and thank you very much to THQ Nordic for providing a code for Kronos Before the Ashes, which should be out now on all reputable platforms. And Google Stadia. Oh, James, that was great. Yeah, good to know. It's good to have him, isn't it, on hand? Because when we're busy playing other games, there are too many games. Too many, too many games. games. Especially in this Too time of year. Too many games. Yeah, no, James November, is a hero. December. Yeah, So he is. thank you, James. But Peter, what have you been playing? Uh, well, so since the end of the last... It, it, so I forgot that I've not mentioned this uh, until just now um, because we did the, the previous podcast a day early, but it feels about two weeks ago to me. So everything <laughs> I've done since then, I feel like I've already addressed. Um, mm-hmm. So... Uh, uh, what am, I, what am I trying to say? Miles Morales to, is the yeah, that's one I'm it. Yeah, to say. How are you getting on with Miles? I finished it. I finished it. The, in fact, I think it was the the evening of our last recording. So um, yeah, it's a while ago now, and I I almost forgot that that's happened. But yeah, so that was super fun. Um, mm-hmm. I I've not like hundred percented it um, either, as far as trophies are concerned, or just like grabbing stuff. You know, I've still got map markers and things lying around, but super fun. Um, I've got the I've got the spider cat in my bag now, nice. um, which has been shown in their promotional material. So I don't mind spoiling that. I think everyone knows about it. Yeah, um, I don't want to know how you get it, but I'm glad that you've got it. No, I won't say how you get it, but uh, I've got it. Um, I've got various interesting outfits. Um, I was surprised actually in the end that kind of how they handled who was the main villain of the game. So I thought it it looked like it was leading you down a certain path in terms of this is the villain, not this person. And then I thought, oh, no, but they're trying to trick me. They're trying to make me think that, like, I'm going to end up, like, going up against this person and then the other one, there's going to be a bait and switch. And they didn't do it in the end. It was, like, the final fight was 
the the person that was kind of uh, implicated in bad stuff, um, kind of early on ish. So um, okay, uh, but that's fine. You know why not? Uh, so I feel like they've left it in a way that, of course, you know the we're hoping that there'll be a proper Spider-Man two, um, but if and when they do that, I feel like they could kind of maybe have it so that you could play as Peter and Miles or Peter or Miles and like flip between them maybe uh uh and you know there's like new rogues to to add to the gallery of the overall game now so you've got these like Miles characters um mm-hmm. that probably wouldn't have been introduced if they'd not gone with a, a Miles Morales um sort of spin-off or expansion game or whatever you want to call it uh so if they'd just gone from Spider-Man 1 to Spider-Man 2 there's these characters you would never have uh, never have seen in the first place, I don't think. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, really enjoyed it, and uh, some of the most fun I've had this year. It's it's going to be up there, I think, with my top few. Uh, nice. Which we'll be probably discussing on the channel soon-ish, won't we? Games of the year, I suspect. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing Mars Morales. I've somehow not i've so, I'm somehow overcome the temptation to just buy it while i've already got loads of other stuff to play so yeah, n- yeah. next on the agenda for me is bank snacks because it was you know free so i'll mm. give that a go and i've also bought the little big planet game oh, oh sack boys now, big yeah. adventure yeah i have that so that'll be the next thing and then i'm going to i will play spidey and i'm really looking forward to it i hope as you say then with 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 the full sequel they they let you play as both but I think there's, I think they know this. But I think there's huge money in slowly building to the point where maybe in Spider-Man Three, it's a multiverse game where you, right. where it brings in other Spider Spider Mans uh, mm. or women, um, and women. Uh, so I think that would that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I would like that a lot. Uh, I've also, as I said earlier, I've uh, been playing Astro's Playroom, and mm-hmm. goodness me. I really, really like it. Like good. I thought a, you a might. Lot. Yeah. Um I I knew that everyone was saying don't don't skip this game, play it as soon as you can. And I was thinking like I will do, I will do. I'm just gonna p- finish Spider Man first. Don't wanna play two things at once. Not that Astro's Playroom is a sprawling, difficult narrative to keep in your head for mm-hmm. <laughs> when you've got another game juggling. But uh I thought, yeah, I'll just I'll play things one at a time. Um and yeah, so I I finally sat down and played that and Blimey, yeah, I think it's it's lovely. And even putting aside all of the kind of USP stuff it's got going for it, so obviously all the, the PlayStation memories as you go around collecting the artifacts and looking at all the little the little bots kind of reenacting scenes from games and things like that. Like that's all very nice. Mm-hmm. Um But I I also think if you just like completely reskinned it and it was nothing to do with PlayStation, it just plays really nice. I really like it as a platformer. Um, Mm -hmm. I really like the way that you like tug on the wires to kind of either activate stuff or to actually defeat enemies. Um, I really, really like the stuff they've done with the controller. I know obviously that's what it was sort of designed for to show off the new controller, but uh, it's more than, uh, well, as I say, the only other game so far I've played is Miles Morales, but it's more than that game uh, does with its controller. All that Spider-Man really did was uh, used the controller speaker and I think there was a little bit of the adaptive triggers uh, when you're swinging I think it just puts a little bit of resistance in there but not very much um, so to then sit down and play uh, Playroom which you know has crazy sort of spring games and uh, what else has it got it lets you blow into your microphone to set off fans and things like that and mm-hmm. yeah it's and even just this, so there's a level where you're on these sort of floating islands and it starts to rain a little bit and then it starts to sort of hail and the way that it plays the sound out of your speaker and does all these little like occasional plip plop plip plop vibrations around your controller in different places it's got sort of a scattering of vibration all over it uh god it's almost i mean i i don't really get asmr for anything but i think if i was if I was the kind of person who was into ASMR, I would very much enjoy just walking around in the hail with my controller going mm, and just like that's a, that's a nice noise. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's what hail sounds like. Um, so, 
just the the whole implementation of what the controller can do and the combination of that and this charming very pretty 3d platformer kind of mascot platformer thing it's yeah it was so fun to play and i was saying when i so then i I stopped playing after two hours in my own time and thought no i'm going to stream this i want to stream it so i was saying on my stream the other day that it's so nice that you know crash 4 difficult as it was was a really is is a really good game i think um and now we've got this as well astro's playroom i think you know there's there's life in the old girl yet when it comes to 3D platforming kind of cartoony yeah. stuff. So it was just a joy to play in that sense as well. So really enjoying that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my hands sort of got a bit numb after an extended play session because of all the vibration. Oh, God. Yeah, I'd, and I'm not the only person who's had this as well. Like, it, it, it actively made me feel quite uncomfortable. For, you know, not every game is going to be built around showing off what the controller can do. So no. to an extent, I sort of understand that. Uh, why it was, you know, all the vibration and stuff was used quite so intensively. Um, but yeah, when I finished playing afterwards, I was like, oh, my my hands don't feel great. Oh, I don't no. know. <laughs> I don't know if I en- I enjoyed the lasting impact of that game, but it is it is fantastic, and we have done a quip scope about it. If you want to see it in action, it's on the channel. Mm. Um, is that is that what you've played? That's all I've played so far. Yeah, this week um, I've had a few nights off gaming this week but yeah uh spider-man and astros nice yeah. nice i also played astro uh finished it off got the platinum what a lovely game mm-hmm. uh really really enjoyed that so hopefully they get to make a full full platformer at some point yeah you know, just like that. the vr one that they did but maybe not in vr I, th- mm. I think that would translate pretty well actually if they just moved the camera around but we will we'll see if they do anything with that i also played warzone Oh, that seems to be a weekly tradition now. Won a game on a bit of a winning streak at the moment, which is nice. By which oh, yeah. I mean I win one game per week and then lose about twenty. But it's still, still good fun. Still really yeah. enjoying playing that with friends. Uh, played Planet Coaster, which we did a quip scope about this week, uh, yeah, so you can course. go hear my full thoughts on that. Really good, really good game that. And of course, I've been playing Demon Souls, and you may remember last week, Peter. When I said, you may remember when I said that I'm going to be playing this for about a month, but I've got the platinum already, but Mm -hmm. I might go for those coins to open the secret door. Well, a week later, I did it. I did it over the weekend. Okay. So so the secret door in Demon's Souls, as some people might be aware, has been added by Bluepoint Games as a a little little treat for players. They did the same thing in Shadow of the Colossus, and it was discovered after intense uh, investigation from the community that you needed to get 26 ceramic coins and then trade them with Snuggly or Sparkly, one of the two, the crow, who will give you a key to get into the door. Mm. Now, to get these ceramic coins, there's only 13 per playthrough, so it's a minimum of two playthroughs to get all the coins you need. You need to play it in fractured mode, which is a new mode they've added, which flips the entire world horizontal. Right. Which is really disorientating, as I'm sure you can appreciate having played Crash 4 recently. Yeah. It sort of completely messes with your mind. But they don't flip your... They they don't keep your character the same. As in, when you flip the world, even though your sword is usually in your right hand, it will now be in your left hand. Right. And you still press R1 to swing your sword, (laughs) but it'll swing from the left hand. It's It really... It takes some getting used to. But because I wanted to get through the door with my main character who was already on new game plus that meant i had to go into new game plus plus to get the next 13 coins and that is that's not a joke playing through that game again on new game plus plus i was getting one shotted by most enemies and it was really really frustrating um it seemed to just sort of ignore all of my all of my levels and the armor I was wearing, it was just like, if you're, if you're not rolling out the way and if you're not blocking, you will die immediately. Mm-hmm. So that was super fun. But I got through the door and I got the penetrator armor set, as it's called, which is the armor set of a boss, which is the item that they put behind the door. So I've done it. I did the demon souls. Fantastic. Uh, I feel like I've... I feel vindicated now because I feel like I've done... Every, there's no trophy associated, but I feel like I've done everything that that game has to offer, mm-hmm. uh, and I've really, you know, given it a good go. So now it's just a case of 
playing it with friends when I feel like it, or finishing up my stream, which I sadly realise is probably going to be maybe over next week because of ah. the because of the structure of the game, as as mentioned in our in our various chats about it. It's mm. it's pretty linear and fairly straightforward, so it's very easy to navigate. You don't lose a lot of time running around the world like you do in Dark Souls, so it's 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 quite short. Yeah, uh, when you know what you're doing and you're amazing at it, like me. So yeah. That's it. That's that's what I've been playing. Demon Souls continues to impress me. Definitely one of the best games I've played this year. Mm. And uh, as you said, we will be talking about Game of the Year stuff probably in a couple of episodes time, probably on our Christmas episode, because we'll be putting up a post where we'll be asking for all of your Game of the Year submissions and then we'll be doing our show in the new year. Yeah. Game of the Year. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Well, we can move on to question two. Yeah. This is from Ethan. Would you like to read it? I would. Hello lads, first time listener, long time caller and all that. Have you ever had a game that has made you lie on your back staring at the ceiling for five hours thinking about things? For me it would probably be Journey, the ending of that game was just very lovely and lonely at the same time. Ta, Ethan. Thank you Ethan. Um, I think I felt a little bit like this recently actually with The Last of Us Part 2. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Just because... I got to the end of it, and that was also, spoilers, one of my top games of this year, I would say. I mean, we'll see when we get there to Mm -hmm. to discuss these things, but that's what I'm assuming I'm going to choose. And I enjoyed it in so many ways, but of course it was, it's this brutal, horrible thing, and terrible things happen to the characters you care about, uh, and the ending is like, Really, I mean, I don't know what I expected, whether I thought everyone was going to live happily ever after in a lovely... Would have been nice, wouldn't it? ...lovely commune, and maybe a cure was going to be found to cordyceps, and, you know, <laughs> they would become king and queen of the world, or, or whoever, mm. uh, whatever. But, um, yeah, wow, it, it really just sort of ended in a way where it was like, okay, where does it go from here? Like, I, I don't necessarily think they should do another game, because... Well, for one thing, like the community is horrible when they're when they're working on sequels, seemingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, uh, you know, it's just because something has ended in a, in a in an open fashion or without a, a, a sickly sweet happy ending doesn't mean that like there's unfinished business there. Um, so I kind of thought. Do I want more of this? Should there be more of this? What would more of this be? You know, what's what's happened to these characters? What where does it go from here? But again, I don't. I almost don't want to know where it goes from here. I was just really conf- almost confused with how I felt emotionally about the game. Yeah. I knew that I had enjoyed it, um, but I thought, man, that was like I just enjoyed something that was kind of on all other counts really horrific and horrible and. It's just a quite a confusing sensation to be left with that, like, that was really good and horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Just a really strange, really strange one. But it's yeah, so, so bleak, isn't it? Yeah. That ending. I feel exactly the same way. It's mm. it's one of those. I think a lot of these for me, that some of these come from just the, the strength of the characters where it's like, oh, no, my cat, my friends. Yeah. My friends yeah. are gone. Is that it? Is that the end? But some of them, like The Last of Us Part Two, sort of just leaves you feeling like, I just don't know how I'm supposed to feel. Like I want I want to know what happens next, but I know the whole point of this is that I don't. Yeah. And it's meant to be up in the air, but oh god, isn't everything terrible? What a fun journey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I also felt the well, not in the same way, but I I I very much had a staring at the ceiling moment with the end of Little Nightmares the first time I played that as well, because mm. mm-hmm. that was such a really bizarre journey through, you know, a very grim uh, world. And you start to, your, your character starts to get darker and darker. And she like, she starts, she gets hungry throughout the game, as you know, Ben, you've seen this. We, we've mm-hmm. played through it together, in fact. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners will have watched it as well. But she, on the occasion, your character will get hungry throughout the game and you'll have to find some food. Otherwise, she'll just sort of stumble around. And first you'll get like, a little little sausage or something and then later on you'll get some meat but it's sort of a a bit of raw meat and you're like oh that's a shame that's all she can find and then she'll see a rat like chewing on some sausage or something and she'll go over and she bites the rat's neck and eats the rat 
Uh, and then right at the end, she eats one of the gnomes that's been running around the game, which are like, they seem to be sentient, you know, humanoid <laughs> beings. Mm-hmm. Um, so she kills one of those and eats it. And then uh, the whole ending of the game, she sort of escapes this world, but she seems to almost be, you kind of, you're rooting for all the way through and then she defeats the the big bad and you're like, yeah, that's great. And then as she escapes, you kind of think, God, what am I releasing onto the world? This is like a demon child here. Like <laughs> she's got scary magical powers and, uh, you know, the music's really eerie. And then when you play the DLC, that ends, spoilers, with the little boy that you play as being turned into a gnome who then wanders into a room and then as the camera pans out and the credits start scrolling, you realise hang on, this is the room where Six eats a gnome. And you realise that, wow, okay, Uh so I went through all of that, was turned into a gnome, and now I'm going to get bitten and killed. So that was a real sort of, huh, wow, I made it kind of moment. (laughs) And just leaves you thinking, God, was she a hero? Was she, what what was that? You know, but it's really good. Really enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to the sequel. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it as well. I'm not going to play it, but I'd love to see it, you know, Mm -hmm. and see how that, uh, how it expands upon uh, upon little little nightmares. One, I was going to say, little big planet, which was yeah. also harrowing in its own way. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how about you? Uh, I've made a note of r- most recently, Life is Strange Two. Right. Which, as I as I mentioned when I played it, it was uh, a case of one of the chapters in particular, Chapter Three, where you're living in the woods and you you mm. spend pretty much the whole game on the lamb. You're running away uh, with your little brother. That one left a really big impression on me like I, th- I thought all the characters were they just felt very real and it mm. didn't they didn't feel cringy which a lot of the characters in life is strange just inherently are uh, apart from the adult characters and that just felt like quite a mature episode and it was very sweet and and i really when it ended i felt really sort of bummed out that i wasn't going to see these characters again because it was time for the protagonists to move on to the next place for chapter four and then chapter yeah. four didn't really leave much of an impact and neither did chapter five and i was like oh man chapter three was so good i missed i missed that and i did think about those characters for like a good a good like week afterwards mm. you know they really did leave an impact so i think that's a testament to the writing in that episode perhaps or at least just the character design or something but Games, when they're really well written and have characters like that, can can leave a, a real impression, and that certainly did. Uh, beyond that, though, the endings of Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite oh, yeah. both sort of had me frantically Googling and looking up YouTube videos and stuff. You know, as we've, again, as we've spoken about on here before, not so much because you have no idea, like, <laughs> what just happened, although sometimes that can be the case. It's more a case of, like, I think I understand what's going on, and I really want to talk to someone about it, but I, I don't have anyone to talk to about it. So I'm going to yeah. watch someone else talk about it and see what they have to say. Mm, um, yeah. And similarly, I think, well, quote unquote, walking simulators can be quite powerful as well. Everybody's gone to the Rapture, oh, yeah, Limbo, sure. and uh, particularly for me, What Remains of Edith Finch was one of the best games I played in 2017, I want to say, when that mm-hmm. came out. That was absolutely fantastic, and you should definitely play it. It was on our Games of the Generation list video that James put together. So please, please go and uh, go and have a look at that. Yeah, for sure. God, Limbo's a good shout, actually, because that just loops back and it just ends up where you started. And you're like, oh my God, what? Mm-hmm. I just made it through a really, you know, because it really gets quite difficult towards the end and you have to do some pretty precise timing and jumping. And I think, I think like the last little bit ends up with like weird... Uh, changes in orientation or something and you're like falling sideways and down ways and up ways if, mm-hmm. if i recall correctly you finally get through that you smash through some glass or something and then he just falls back to the beginning and you're like oh god okay what does it mean yeah um good absolutely. game absolutely yeah. well it's time to move on from a slightly strange game to a very weird section Mm-hmm. Are you ready, Peter? I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm ready now, yeah. It's time for Weird News! Weird News! It's Weird News time. Peter, have you got some strange gaming news? I've got some somewhat strange gaming news. Um, it's from Luke Plunkett at Kotaku, our go-to Weird News correspondent. Unofficially, mm. he's got no idea that that's his 
no, absolutely official no position here at Triple Jump. Um, I'm not actually going to read the um, the headline in full because it's a bit of a spoiler for what's coming up. But um, essentially, Crusader Kings Three has released some uh, patch notes, and they are weird. Is the is what the headline should be? Okay. Um, that's right. It's Crusader Kings Three patch notes time, says Luke. The game, very likely my Game of the Year nomination, oh, okay, has already set a very high bar for patch notes, and that is hyperlinked to a previous article with other weird patch notes, which I might quickly touch on at the end of this. Um, but this latest round has seen the mark improved. Uh, I could list them all straight from Steam's change log, but really it's better and more thematically appropriate to hear them in the style of a town crier. He's then Im- embedded a tweet where someone called Josh Ling at Tactful uh, on Twitter has recorded themselves reading the patch notes in the style of a town crier with some like oblivion music playing in the background. So I'm not going to play that. I'm just going to read them to you. Um, but here, here we go. This is just a few highlights. Uh, so, ugly characters now look more ugly. Good to know. <laughs> okay. Intelligent women no longer confront their pregnant lesbian lover to ask if they are the father of that child. Stupid women, however, still have a chance to ask that question. (laughs) Wow. Um, Physicians can now treat themselves, and they're also more likely to mess up your treatment if they're trying to murder you. Uh, You can no longer mistake your infant child for a serial killer, which is good to know, Mm because so far you've been able to do that in the game, seemingly. Um, you cannot confide in friends that you do not have, which is good. Right. Um, and people will no longer call you vile as a friendly greeting. Ah, oh, <laughs> brilliant. Glad that they're fixing this game bit by bit. Luke's game of the year. Um, <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a it's a sprawling, complex game, the Crusader Kings, with lots of... It's it's a sort of diplomacy game, and and you know you do a lot of interacting with other people. So mm. I can understand how certain combinations of things cause other strange effects. Um, but to quickly just go through some of the other uh, the patch notes from a previous patch, uh, I've got I've got a link to another article here, which was also by Luke. This is uh, back in September, I think. Um, and uh, on here we've got. Uh, you can no longer be tortured to confess a secret that you don't know, which, you know, I mean, that's just horrible to think about. Uh, you can no longer lose a friend you didn't have. You will no longer be stressed out if a spouse you dislike dies. So oh, you, wow. You'll be fine with it if if uh, if they uh, kick the bucket. The Pope can no longer publicly accept cannibalism. Uh Svend the second of Denmark now spawns as either bisexual or heterosexual. I'm not sure the the significance of that. Um, and best of all, I think sneaky people will now wear sneaky clothes. Oh, what are sneaky clothes? <laughs> I don't know. Invisibility cloaks, maybe, or something like Surely. that. Surely. Um. So we talked. Did we did we cover that in weird news previously that you can. Uh, eat the Pope. Yeah, you can eat the Pope, and like the Pope can say that cannibalism is okay publicly and encourage everyone to be cannibals. And yeah, God, sounds like a fun game. It's something I would it never does. be able to get into because it's just got that much to it. But you know, I welcome people to continue to do strange things with that game and for Luke absolutely. to write about it. So absolutely, I want to hear more. Yeah. So More they're slowly, slowly patching out the weird from that game. There might be less news from that game <sighs> as time goes on, but we'll see. Damn it. Um, have you got some weird news, Ben? Yes, Good. I have. I'm actually doing a cheeky double dip because I mentioned this on another podcast that we do. Right. And I'm doing it again, so you've got to act surprised. Oh, okay, I will. Uh, this was also, coincidentally... Sent to us by Ernie Arrowsmith. Thanks for listening to the other podcast we do, Ernie. Cheers for that. Thank you, Ernie. Um, so here, here it is. This is from, for some reason, GiveMeSport.com. Right. Which, of course, are renowned for writing about video game news. Uh, man forced to sell his PS5 after wife discovers it's not an air purifier. What? What a strange story. How did that happen? Tell me more. Oh, God, you're doing a great job so far. Thanks. 
With all the buzz surrounding the release of the PlayStation 5, it's been hard to get hold of the console, let alone pick one up for a discount. However, a hilarious situation in Taiwan saw one gamer pick up a cheap console after the seller told his wife it was an air purifier. Reportedly, the unfortunate Taiwanese gamer picked up a PS5 and believed the only way to have it in the, in the house without objection was to tell his other half it was an air purifier. How many times can we say air purifier? <laughs> Had it been a PlayStation 3 or 4, this story might have gone down better thanks to the overactive fans on both consoles. But Sony's latest offering is much quieter, although it certainly does look like an air purifier. There it is again. Mm. Got to mention it every single sentence. Keep the story, it. which first appeared on Facebook, explained that the buyer, Jin Wu, arranged to meet his console seller over the phone. Two things raised his suspicions. Firstly, a female voice that's, uh, that he said did not sound like a gamer great and secondly the console was cheaper than the others he found online Jin Wu explained when the seller arrived it turned out to be a middle-aged man you could tell that he definitely played video games just with a single look <laughs> what does that mean I don't know maybe he was wearing sneaky clothes yeah where did you buy this console Wu asked uh Pichom, I think I'm not sure how mm. you pronounce that the man replied referencing a major Taiwanese online marketplace Oh, you're really quick at reserving the console, Wu replied. Did you manage to reserve two consoles? If not, why are you selling this? Then things got really sad, really fast. It's my wife who wants to sell it, said the unwilling console salesman. Oh. Wu says that he went quiet at this point, a little taken aback by the pain in the man's eyes, yeah. before the surprising and hilarious punchline was finally revealed. The seller said, Seems like, seems like women... Seems like women can still tell the diff can still tell the difference between a PS5 console and an air purifier. Can still tell the difference. Can still. Wow, good for women, I suppose. <laughs> We're not 100% sure if we believe Jin Wu that this really happened, but if it did, it's absolutely hilarious. We'll accept it for now with a huge pinch of salt and a good laugh. <laughs> Thanks, everybody loves sports. Uh, that's George Storrs. Excellent reporting over it. Give me sports. Everybody loves sport. Yeah. Give me sport.com. Thank you very much for that news there. Thank Ernie. you. Ernie. Brilliant. Brilliant there stuff. Um and we recommend everyone takes a takes a look at the picture, the side by side. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there'll be a link below. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, it's time for question three. Mm. This is from Carrie Bookter. Uh, I've still not worked out for saying that right, but one day I'll know and then forget. Uh, hi, lovely boys. Just wondering what you consider to be good combat mechanics. Ryan and I aren't huge fans of the slash and roll Soulsborne types, but uh, we understand that everyone appreciates different things. What's your favourite uh, or opinion on good fighting uh, styles? Thank you for all your hard work and loads of laughs. Walrus Clan rocks! Certainly does. Thank you, Thank Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. <sighs> well, I don't know. I almost I struggled in a way with this to try and think of like what I think is the superior fighting style because mm -hmm. I think different games lend themselves to different styles. Um, however, I do think there is something to be said for the very flip flop heavy um, uh, kind of um, finisher heavy. Spider-Man slash Batman Arkham style stuff. I think that's very fun and engaging combat. I don't mm -hmm. think it's necessarily that complex. I think you can actually do a fair bit of mashing and, you know, and look good doing it. But in a way, that's quite nice. So again, it sort of depends what you want. I appreciate, despite not being a Soulsborne fan myself, I can appreciate the uh, what goes into that combat system and the satisfaction that you get out of uh, you know, doing successful dodges and parries and choosing, you know, do I do a light attack or a heavy attack or, or whatever. Um, you know, I've, I've played a little bit of a couple of Soulsborne games myself, just a, a, you know, probably 10, 15 minutes of a couple of them. Uh, so I've at least got hands on with that and I see where the fun is there. Um, but I do think, like, especially just off the back of playing Miles, Mor Miles Morales, I think just... Uh, kind of um, flying between different enemies super quickly and punch, 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 switch, punch, 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 you know, and dodging underneath people's legs and then doing a finisher that instantly kills people. It's just super fun to do. And as I say, you just look good doing it. Whatever you do, you just press all the buttons and you'll probably do okay. So mm -hmm. I do think there's something to be said for either 
you know, Marvel Spider Man or or the Arkham games. Um yeah, I think there's a lot of fun to be had there. Yeah. Definitely. I've I've also put down Bark uh, Bar- Barkham Atman. Right. <laughs> which is the name of my dog. Yeah. Uh, Batman Arkham slash Spidey Combat. Uh as as I've said before on this podcast, I played Batman Arkham City without any of the bat sense counter stuff that appears above your head. Yeah. Because I played it on the hardest difficulty and it sort of became second nature about being able to read when enemies were swinging at you mm. and in the end I, d- I didn't miss it at all and it was it was extremely satisfying to play it that way yeah. without any hints or tips that you were about to get hit uh so yeah there's it, that's extremely satisfying i'm obviously a big fan of soulsborne combat and mm. there is a huge a huge amount of satisfaction as you said in terms of timing your role and getting your invincibility frames or parrying and blocking and then and then going in for your attack but different weapons have different types of you know attack if your equip load is above 50 percent in demon souls you do what the community has dubbed fat rolling right so you roll slowly like you're wearing heavy armor which you probably are uh so there's a real emphasis on trying to get your equip load below 50 percent so you can roll at speed uh but some character builds are massive tanks with ridiculous weapons and that's a completely different play style because you have to slowly trudge around you never roll and you just have to get your attacks in at the right time to completely decimate your enemies before they stun you with their attacks mm. uh, so there are, there are different approaches to that game depending on how you want to play it. obviously there's ranged you can do magic and stuff if you yeah. want to be a filthy cheater so there we go um i've also written down that while I think it doesn't have a great deal of depth to it and could probably get a little dull after a while, I really, really enjoy uh, Dynasty Warriors combat. Oh, yeah. Just sort of wading into a sea of enemies and just pressing loads of buttons to send them all flying around mm. up in the air. You yeah. know, I don't think there's any... I may be wrong, but I don't think there's a great deal of skill necessarily that goes into into Dynasty Warriors, but it re- it's fun. It is fun to send all the all the baddies go flying up in the sky. Yeah, I think any game where you can knock down loads and loads of fodder enemies in a single swing is always super satisfying. You know, whether it's um, you know, God of War would sometimes allow you to do that and I think like I've I've always enjoyed kind of whip chain flail style weapons in video <clears throat> games, particularly in hack and slash style stuff. I really really enjoyed um Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Oh yeah, uh, I like that one. Which is a game I've not—I don't think we've really talked about on the podcast before. But that also had a kind of chain flail thing with a lot of range on it um, mm-hmm. as your weapon, and I thought that was super satisfying at times. It was also there was a lot wrong with that game in 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 some ways, like it was kind of <laughs> overly difficult in places and finicky, and you had like three different bars of like resources or or mana or energy or whatever. But uh, yeah, great those, voice cast though. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, and great aesthetic, and there's, there's a lot right with it as well. Like, don't get mm. me wrong, but um, but yeah, I I enjoyed that style of weaponry. If anything, you know, whether it's kind of no matter how it's implemented in the game, in the combat style, normally it allows you to swing around and hit like twelve people at once, and that alone is there's a lot to be said for that. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Uh, different um, strokes for different folks. And absolutely. All One thing I also wrote down actually was Kingdom Hearts. Um, mm, which okay. I don't think is necessarily known for its combat system, but uh, I've only played the first Kingdom Hearts game, and then I missed the second one, and then I missed Kingdom Hearts 2.139 Mini Squared Dreams Chain of Memories Edition. Of course, uh, yes, HD Remix. Yeah, so I, then I dropped it forever. I was like, no thanks. Uh, but Kingdom Hearts 1, I actually really enjoyed the combat in that game. I think you could, you could customise... Um, certain abilities and you could wear different um like sort of trinkets or chains or something or you know to give you different benefits um and then you would you could very easily because of like how the hotkey system worked you could uh cast a lot of different spells quite easily you could summon people in which wouldn't just you wouldn't necessarily just have someone uh be summoned in and they would go off and like attack enemies for you like sometimes it would be a combination so like they would do stuff with you uh which was fun um and 
also you could you could like flick your right stick upwards to get to the bottom of the there's a little little list of commands in the bottom even though it was a a completely real time combat game it was sort of presented in a bit of a kind of final fantasy combat style way because you could um you know you you had different choices it was like it was like a a turn based combat system in the bottom left of the screen but it was all in real time so you could like quickly flick to the bottom of that list and depending on the distance between you and your enemy it would allow you to activate certain special attacks and then at the end of that special attack if you perfectly timed um hitting the attack button again there would normally be like a final flourish so that was quite satisfying as well so yeah a game i've not really thought about for a long time but i got a lot out of kingdom hearts one um and the combat was one of the things i quite enjoyed and the enemies nice. tended to be quite kind of chunky and squishy and you know <laughs> it felt nice to hit them as well yeah yeah Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat sounds a little a bit similar to that. Actually. Yeah, true. That actually, was, that was really good too. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Keep forgetting about that game. I shouldn't forget about that game. Yeah. So I haven't forgotten about it, but it, you know how you finish a game and then you, it just sort of goes to the back of your mind for a bit. Yeah. And this podcast every week makes us have to dredge up these memories. Yeah. <laughs> of playing games, and th- they're often in my mind just compartmentalized and just shoved down a bit. Mm. Always forget. Well, there we are. It's time to move on, Peter, to a large chat. If it you is, will. yeah, one of the largest, largest oh. chats I've I've ever known. Two two pints of larger. Yes, it's a big discussion. Big of them. Big discussion time. Here comes a big discussion, Peter, courtesy of Stukalicious. Oh, who says? Hello, boys. Bit of a serious question, really, but it's an issue I'm noticing more frequently. Is it, it's an issue I'm noticing... Oh, Jesus! Hello? It's an issue I'm noticing more frequently. Ah. Uh, no, no, it's an issue I'm noticing more frequently. Yeah, you were thinking of the word recently there. I was. God, my brain. What is happening today? It's only 11am. It's okay. Don't should be working now. Earlier in the year, a lot of unwarranted and deeply undeserved abuse was sent to Naughty Dog, particularly Neil Druckmann and Laura Bailey for The Last of Us Part 2. And more recently, CD Projekt Red Staff have been victim have been the victim of threats and abuse for the delay of Cyberpunk 2077. What do you think has seen this rise of entitled players and keyboard warriors, and how do we, the more level-headed of the games community, stop this? All abuse is unacceptable. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Stukalicious. Now, this is going to be a fun conversation because every time we talk about The Last of Us Part 2, some people who, who clearly do listen to the podcast every week just dislike it, just thumb thumb it down on YouTube. Yeah, it it's baffles really, it's me, It's very really. strange. I don't know why they're still here. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, I, I, I can't change. I mean, it's, you can hope to, but I can't. You know, we're not necessarily going to change people's opinion on stuff. Um, but you would think that after a couple of conversations we've had saying, hey, we think this is like a bad attitude to have. And who are you if if this is the way you're behaving towards people? Why would you carry on listening to that like mm. regularly? I don't, I don't understand it at all. It's very strange. Yeah. It's very strange. But perhaps that's emblematic of the larger issue. I don't, I don't know why there's been a rise, really. I think it's just... It's, Perhaps there's been a rise maybe from 20 years ago because there are more people online. I think hateful people have always existed and nasty people. Yeah. And the internet gives gives sort of a, an element of anonymity, <clears throat> excuse me, anonymity that obviously is is has been widely explored in other areas and, and in far more detail than we'll be able to talk about it today. But um, yeah, people people feel brave. People feel brave to chat rude rude word. Mm. flip to chat flip when they don't know when no one can know who they are really and the, the, the most frustrating thing about this is that it's a they're bloody video games right <laughs> like yeah. why why is this what you're choosing to send death threats about no one should send death threats anyway but the video games yeah really you can not like a game that's okay. Making it your whole mission to make people's lives miserable because you don't like a game is is sociopathic. What's wrong with you? It's it's a strange attitude to have when you break it down because uh, really it's someone saying it's it's an artist or a group of artists uh, when it comes to a video game saying, 
hey, here's our art that we've made. Um, hope you like it. And people can either say, yes, I like it or no, I don't like it. And that's completely fine to dislike something. However, to say, no, I don't like it, you wouldn't, I mean, I'd like to think you wouldn't, go to a, a painter, for example, and yell at them and say, this has been painted badly and this is how you should have painted it. And actually, I want you to paint it again. Do it again. And it's like... N- I hope you die. I hope you die. And if you don't do it again, uh, you, well, you need to do it again. Otherwise, I hope you die. And uh, Why would someone... I mean, no one's ever going to just do it again anyway. No one's going to do over of a movie or a game just because you demand that they do it. But why... Why would you do it for someone who's who has that attitude towards you anyway? You know, like people who are aggressive and toxic and horrible coming at you on social media saying this game's crap because it's got girls in it or because uh, you represent people of diff- different ethnicities or because of because you, you killed a major character or whatever. Uh, if they're listing things that they don't like. If I was to make The Last of Us Part 3, part of me would want to, almost out of spite, just make it even more, yeah, double down. Be like, okay, well, the nice people who were nice about my game, I'm going to give them what they want. And I'm not going to go, oh, I don't want those nasty people to be nasty to me again. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to make The Last of Us Part 1 again, but set it 20 years later. So it's just the same game all over again, because that's what (laughs) they liked. You know, it's madness. Absolutely. And that's the thing. You you hit it right on the, the head there is that this is this is either if you want to really simplify it, this is the creative director slash writer's vision for this game. And it's theirs. Yeah. And I'm sure they hope you'll like it. But if you don't like it, then that's OK. And you're allowed to voice, you know, your opinion and how you feel about it. Don't attack them because of it. You know, if if there's something fundamentally wrong with a game take for example the ending of mass effect 3 which was widely criticized and rightly so if you are signing a petition or like saying oh wow this ending really wasn't that great was it kind of disappointed after the the, you know playing this whole trilogy and supporting them through all this that's okay You're, you're okay to do that some people might think it's a bit silly because it's a video game but if you feel that strongly then you can do that hmm. if you choose to attack the team responsible for it that's crossing a line. And if you can't see that that's an issue, then I don't know what to say because that's clearly an issue. Yeah, it's it's almost like they're not actually, in a sense, they're not doing this stuff to please you. Like they are in so much as they want their product to be a success because that's their bread and butter and it's how they take home a paycheck at the end of the, of the month. Um, but people aren't, People who do these things aren't, or certainly not exclusively, I guess, is my point. They're not. They're not going out of their way just to make other people happy uh, with the with the creative thing that they have made. Like, there's a huge aspect to it where they are just telling the story that they want to tell, and that that's what they're doing. They're not telling the story they want to tell so that other people will love them for it. Of course, they want to be a success, but it's a bit like telling a a bedtime story to your child that you're making up. You know, you're just sitting by the bed telling the story and someone walking in and going, I don't like that story. That's not a very good story, is it? And you're like, what do you mean? What? I'm just I'm just sitting in. I'm just making up a story. Like, obviously, I hope I hope other people like it, but it's just my story that I'm telling. Like, don't I didn't ask for you to come in here and start yelling at me. All I asked is that, like, if you want to hear this story. By all means, enjoy it. And oh, thanks for supporting me financially through it. But if not, don't worry. That's fine. It's all it's all okay. Just mm-hmm. move on with your life. I think there's an element of once you've once you've paid for a product, you deserve to voice your opinion, even if yeah. it is an upset one. But it was it was pretty pretty apparent that the vast majority of the people talking specifically about The Last of Us Part 2, who were yeah. furious about The Last of Us Part 2, didn't go anywhere near it. And a lot of them said, well, it's because of this that I refuse to play it. Mm. Neil Neil Cuckman pushing his agenda. And it's like, how old are you? Yeah. Really? How old are you that you can afford to waste time being angry about a game you're never going to play? What's, yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? And to draw it onto CD Projekt Red stuff... Uh, getting death threats and regular threats and yeah. all, all the fun threats because Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed. That's just 
so idiotic. I know it's fun to sort of laugh and joke and meme about how cyberpunk's being delayed. And I think that's okay as long as it's not nasty. You know, mm. don't don't be horrible to these people. There's a very good reason it's been delayed. And I know because I've I've gone into the Twitter replies to these uh, these posts, you know, with the yellow background yeah. saying announcements. And it's like, Me oh, too. God, what now? And a lot of people are rightfully really miffed because they've booked time off to yeah. to play this game and then they they can't they can't take that back. There was one guy who tweeted them the day before the most recent announcement saying I've booked time off. I've had to reschedule my time off. I can't move it again. Can you <laughs> confirm there'll be no more delays? They've replied and said no more delays, we promise. And then the next day delayed. You can be angry about that. I get yeah. it. You're allowed to be upset. Don't send threats though. That's not okay. I don't I shouldn't have to explain. We shouldn't have to explain. Nobody should have to explain why that's not okay. You're yeah. allowed to be angry. Don't send threats though. Yeah. It 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 just beggars belief, really. Like it is a shame that it's being delayed uh and it, it that it's been delayed several times and that it's on top of that it's been in the making for a long time anyway, you know, before we even got the official announcement like it's it's actually coming now. Uh, your your breathtaking, then <laughs> you know it it had been talked about for a long time before then. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, ultimately, if they're having to delay it, part of the reason they're delaying it, by the way, is because they don't want to have people yelling at them like they yelled at Naughty Dog. It's like they're caught between a rock and a hard place, really, because it's like we could delay it a few times. Um, and then, you know, people are going to have a go at us because we're delaying it. They're going to send us death threats because, you know, they've booked two days off work. Um, or we could, like, put it out as it is, but we know it's not finished. And then we'll just get people complaining that, like, why is this game so trash? And, you know, yeah. how come it's really glitchy? Or why is this thing happening? And, oh, I'm going to send you a death threat because you released this game and it's not finished. So... Yeah. Yeah, what a world. In terms of like how people um, got to be so entitled, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head as well, Ben. I don't think there's like necessarily more nasty people out there. I think there's just the anonymity of the internet, the the deindividuation of just being one of a, a crowd of hundreds or thousands of Anime people. Anime avatars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's just so easy to to be like that. But it is something that goes goes back. I uh, realized that um, the Animaniacs did uh, did a skit back in you know whenever it was like the early nineties um, of a guy who was sitting at his computer and uh, he was basically being like the guy from The Simpsons, like boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Mm-hmm. He hits two ribs. With the, at the same time, and they produce clearly different tones. Um, and I kind of thought, like, wow, like, okay, I know it was only a couple of decades ago, but here's a depiction of a, um, a stereotypical character that we can still very much recognize today, mm-hmm. um, even back in those days where the internet was in its infancy and, uh, you know, people were playing much simpler video games or, you know, just just watching movies and TV shows. But even back then, there were people like that. And unfortunately, now they've just got louder and there's more of them. And it's much easier just to at Naughty Dog on Twitter and say, yeah. I'm going to kill you. Um, yeah, exactly. And also, I think in both of these examples, these two games were were hugely hyped, you know, Huge franchises with a lot of excitement coming into them. You know, these yeah. games were very much in the public uh, spotlight for a long time. They were both in development for a long time. And so I think these perhaps more than more than other examples that we could talk about were, uh, you know, pr- was sort of th- just, just a breeding ground for hatred, really. You know, the, the, the nasty troll people focused their efforts on these two games because they were the shiniest and the biggest and... Uh, they did. They just naturally drew the most ire, you know, as the, as the bigger franchises. And there's a bandwagon effect as well. I think. I think you know, it probably started with like initially just some people being genuinely really upset about things that have been included in The Last of Us Part Two for some reason. That's a whole different argument. If those things actually upset you in the first place, like okay, right, you do you, uh, or maybe don't, don't do you. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it will have started with a, a certain subsection of the community who are offended by things like that. And then I think 
when word gets around that people are starting to review Bomber Game or talk online about how crap it's going to be or is now that it's come out, other people jump on that either because they also sort of feel that way, but they weren't yet voicing their opinion because they're not they, they they just weren't going to, but now they will. Uh, or they jump on the bandwagon just for fun, and they think it's just they think it's really funny that even though they're not offended by that game. Uh, they're like, oh, yeah, oh, everyone's like sending death threats to Neil Druckmann. Okay, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll do one too. I'll try and come up with my own personal death threat that's yeah. better than other people's. Um, yes. so, so there's a it's, whole it's terrible. swamp of crap there of different people with different motivations, I think. Really, yeah, there really is. Uh, in terms of what, what we can do, though, yeah, uh, there's, there, is, there is an argument for ignoring it. Because sometimes it's just not worth going out of your way to get into a fight. I've tweeted about The Last of Us and I've had people reply saying, oh, this game is terrible. And they don't even follow me. And it's clear that they've just got a keyword set up for The Last of Us. Oh, exactly definitely. as you've proven here. Yeah. Uh, or as you've said here, that, that, that proves that. Um, and I just muted them or blocked them straight away. Because it's like, you are not worth my time. I'm not going to yeah. give you any oxygen. Go away. But, you know, because if you if you do try and engage with them you will get into a fight that's why they're there is to fight you and it's not worth it you should still try to call it out when you see it you know even if it's just a case of using your platform however small for good you gotta mm. you know as, as we're doing now you just sort of gotta denounce activity like that um voice support for the victims of that kind of activity and and just try to act as a voice of reason and, and hope that if people were somehow on the fence or maybe even on the other side of that fence they could see actually take a step back and see oh actually i'm being really really nasty and these are real people and uh because i don't like their video game doesn't mean i should threaten to kill them or their family or wish them harm because that's absurd yeah no absolutely yeah but ultimately it kind of it goes back to to coin what is probably worryingly it's like a 10 year old phrase now which makes me feel old like don't feed the trolls really just mm. you know if people are online saying this game's crap isn't it anyone don't yeah oh i hate this game mm -hmm. uh you know don't you don't want to engage too much you're right that like you know one should use one's uh platform where possible and try and promote uh healthy discussion and you know positivity, uh, positivity and stuff like that you know uh, I just say, hey, if you want to say something about this game, that's all right. Just do it in a nice way. Yeah, because um, otherwise it's not okay. Exactly, because uh, bad is not good. But ultimately, if someone is has already taken it to a place of, uh, go and go and top yourself or whatever, and you know, just the worst possible things that you could say to someone, um, that's something that is probably not worth engaging with in the first place. Really, mm -hmm. um, just block and report. Yeah, shut them down. Yeah. And that's uh, that's that, I suppose. Um, we will just sit back and watch all the dislikes roll in because, f yeah. again, for some reason, the people who, who listen to this podcast or watch it, I suppose, on YouTube, for some reason, keep coming back, even though it's very clear where we stand on this issue. And they just want to come in and pop a dislike in and then bugger off. And, uh, you know, all the power to you. I'm sure the comments will be nice too, but we're not going in there, so don't waste your time. And it's weird because it's like, it it's, it ties in with other issues that we're also vocal about. You know, the the things that, as I say, the problems that people had with Last of Us Part 2, I mean, I think certain people had different, you know, if, if you had problems that like certain characters were killed off, all right, that's kind of your opinion. But certain people were disappointed with the representation of certain genders or sexualities or ethnicities that's something that they disliked about that game because mm -hmm. of that and we've been very vocal in other topics unrelated to the last of us part two in other podcasts about how you know that's not okay that kind of attitude um so it, not only are the people who um dislike the last of us part two listening but also people who seem to have very 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 different political or social opinions to us um but yeah seem to continue to listen for some reason but if, thanks, okay. thanks for listening i suppose thanks yeah thanks for listening but also you know i hope i hope something we've discussed here resonates at least a little bit because yeah. you can be a nasty piece of work if you want but you don't have to tell everyone about it yeah <laughs> you, you know? can think, think just be, things just be just be a quiet nasty piece of work and that's it yeah. as we said it's okay to be angry about things that annoy you that's mm. not what we're saying just don't attack the people responsible 
because it's a video game, for God's sake. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Come on. Yeah, absolutely. And there we are. Good. Well, that's that's the world put to rights. Pfft. We'll see until Sorted. until we get until we get death threats. Yeah. Which genuinely is probably the kind of reaction that those sorts of people would have to a discussion like this. Yeah. Hope these do die. Yeah, please. Right. Well, probably Gosh. will eventually, but yeah. Thanks, I suppose. Peter, where can people find us if they wanted to send us death threats? If you want to send us death threats, or if you maybe want to just like send nice things to us, um, our content goes out on youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. That's where we put our videos and our live streams. Uh, when we stream on both of those platforms, we are modded by Lord Brotovich, Madstodactyl, and Trowling Badger. They will stop you saying nasty things to us. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm. Yeah, I got you. Good luck. Um, we've got social media, of course, twitter.com and facebook.com forward slash team triple jump. And Luke Eldon will stop you saying nasty things on Facebook. Um, it's up to us to protect our own Twitter, I suppose. But thank you, Luke, for looking after Facebook. Um, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump is where you can access all kinds of rewards, which allows you to support this channel financially. Um, you can ask questions on this podcast, worst games ever, early, things like that. Lots of other things, too. The podcast is available in audio form at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash triple jump. Um, and uh, that's if you're watching on, on video right now, of course. That's where you can get it, audio form. I miss Discord, which is bit.ly forward slash team triple jump. That's modded by Jack and Joe. Thank you, Jack and Joe. Don't let there be any death threats on there. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, finally, the the website is um, triplej.mup, that's J-U dot M-P, and uh, you can go to triplej.mup forward slash shop for our store, and triplej.mup forward slash VODs for our live stream VODs channel, where we put all of our VODs, and there's also a uh, weekly highlights package by Pat Fenn. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. You can follow Peter on Instagram and Twitter at that Peter Austin and myself just on Twitter at confused underscore dude. We do lists every Tuesday and Thursday streams every Monday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday. Thursday being the joint stream on YouTube, Monday, Friday and Sunday being solo streams on Twitch. Worst Games Ever is fortnightly, Friday for patrons, Sunday for everyone else. It's not a Worst Games Ever week this week. Podcast is every Saturday and shows we do those one every other week or thereabouts. All sorts of other stuff coming your way over December and Christmas time. Please leave us a review on iTunes, etc. or your platform of choice. It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. And uh, I'd like to thank, before we go, Cecil Prumps for all her amazing mod work. Over Cecil. the last couple of years or so, she's taken a step back from modding. She'll still show up from time to time. But uh, yeah, we want to thank her for all her hard work. Thank you very much indeed, Sessa Prompt. You've been there from the from the very beginning of this channel, mm -hmm. pretty much, doing the mods. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, invaluable service. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a What It Means to Me episode from MMA on Point's Tom Ransom. We used to work Handsome with him. Handsome Tom Ransom. Handsome Tom Ransom. Used to work with him at What Culture, and now he's running a very successful MMA channel, if you're interested in, in MMA, but he talks all about what Fable means to him, the classic mm. Lionhead game. So go and watch that video. That went out yesterday. And of course, there's that Quipscope on Planet Coaster if you'd like a bit more information on that. Okay. All done, I think. Peter, yeah. remind us of today's sponsor. Oh, my stomach's grumbling and rumbling and bumbling, but I, I want to just like play some games in a soft play area first. So why don't I head down to Gastro's Playroom? Oh. oh. Lovely. I can go inside of a PS5. The ghost inside my PlayStation. Fantastic. Make sure you go there now. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Be a voice for positivity. You can do it. I know most of you can do it. Most of you are delightful. Most um, of you are doing it. I see you guys on social media being nice. We see you, um, bruv. We see you. But hey, if you've maybe maybe this has made you think twice. Maybe you're one of those people. I don't think that's like. No, I don't think we've changed <laughs> no. any minds here. We're just uh, we're in an echo chamber apart from the people who wander in and go, "Ugh, being nice, dislike." Yeah. Um, okay. Well, maybe if you dislike this video, just think about what that means. Really, ultimately, just yeah. just try and introspect a little bit. If you sad can. boy, you're sad boy, yeah. or girl. No, I think it's mainly boy. It's mostly it is mostly boys. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but try White being a nice boy. heterosexual males, I think, is what it is. Ah, uh, excellent. Okay, we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for listening. Be nice. Bye. Bye bye.